What's up, y'all? Good morning. How's everybody doing? Yes, I said morning. It's a little unusual for me since I uh, usually do my videos at night when the night shaving. Uh, but this morning is a little different. Uh, I got some time off for the um, Christmas holidays. So today I'll be bringing you a shave of the day in the morning. So I hope everybody's doing well, uh, enjoying um, some uh, Christmas spirit that's going around. I know that I am. And uh, this morning we're going to be doing a shave. Um, this is a unique shave for, uh, for my videos. I'm not really um, putting a spotlight on anything, any one specific product. Um, it's the end of the year, so I've kind of decided to, to put a few things just mixed together. Um, I'm doing a Frankenstein soap today, um, which is odd. Maybe it's the nightmare before Christmas here uh, with a Frankenstein soap since Frankenstein would be more of a Halloween theme. But either way, uh, it's the end of the year and just trying to clean up the den a little bit and get rid of some of the soaps that, you know, are they're not they're not completely out, but we're getting real close to running out on them. So I've just kind of mixed and matched and put some stuff together. And um, I've got three different soaps that I've put together in a shave bowl and we're just gonna um, see how that goes. Um, but the showcase, um, more or less, I guess the spotlight would be on the blade and the razor, not necessarily the products um, as far as the software, but the hardware. Um, today I'm going to be using the Parker R66. It is a beautiful, heavy-weighted, twist-to-open style butterfly. And if I can get it to go right inside of it, uh, if it'll focus in, I'm not sure, is the Laser Ultra Triple Coated. Now my last video I did, I used the Laser Triple Coated, uh, Ultra Triple Coated in the uh, Parker variant and it was a very nice uh, shave. So real quick, here is the, uh, this is the wrapper for it here, Oops, other side there. Um, this blade is made in India. And I couldn't think of a better way to do it. It worked so nice in the Parker variant that I decided to do a shave today in the Parker R66 since Parker is, in, um, is a company from India also. So I paired those together today for what I expect to be a very wonderful shave. All right, so we're gonna get started with a little bit of shave oil. This is the last little bit. There's not much left in there, so We'll be making a new batch of shave oil here soon. And I'm just going to rub that in. Now it's been a few days since uh, since I shaved. I've got about two days worth of growth on my face. So I would anticipate that my trouble area right here is going to be a little aggravated since I have to shave every day. Um, just because the way that my hair follicle grows in, it doesn't matter if I'm chasing the dragon for that BBS three pass smooth or not. If I skip, um, if I, if I, if I skip a day or go too long without shaving, then I'm plucking ingrowns out just because the way the hair follicles grow, um, in this area of my face, just underneath the neckline here, they grow really, really close to the skin and they do not come out normal. Um, they actually grow sideways just underneath and it, whether I'm using a single blade or not, if I skip a couple days, I get ingrowns. So it's very important for me to shave every single day. All right. That was a lavender scent. It's what I usually use. I think next, uh, the next batch I do, I'm going to dedicate that one to the citrus cedar instead of the lavender. I like the lavender. Um, it's a very calming, soothing smell, but at the same time, the citrus cedar is very nice. Very, very nice. So, what I have, I'll show you in the bowl here, I have three different soaps pressed into the bowl and they've been blooming in the water while I was in the shower. And so there is a uh, unscented, um, which is the very, the white down here. This is a very, it's an unscented, basically like a, it would be the formula of the soap, <clears throat> just doesn't have a scent to it, a natural scent of uh, the oils. Up here in the top is a tobacco caramel, and then right here is spiced mahogany. Now all together they smell really nice. I smell the caramel tobacco, 
And of course the spiced mahogany um, just swirled in there together and it doesn't make a new scent. I just pick up the notes from each one of them. So, um, so it's really nice. All right, I'm just gonna squeeze out. I didn't pull on the hairs. I just squeezed out the water. And we're gonna go straight in here to um, make a lather. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of water as we go. I'm loading the brush now. As you can see, it's coming around very nice already. Um, so how's everybody doing? Everybody doing well? Enjoying, uh, like I said, some time off, I hope. Getting ready for uh, the jolly old elf to uh, show up. I've um, <clears throat> got all my Christmas shopping done and got uh, all the um, presents wrapped. I'm trying to walk and chew gum at the same time. It's not working very well. Uh, but anyway... Uh, got everything wrapped up, got everything underneath the Christmas tree, and uh, kids are excited. Uh, they come home every day wanting to know if they can open um, a present, you know. They're so excited about seeing the gifts underneath the tree and and uh, talking about Santa Claus coming. And, you know, when you got toddlers and little ones, we've got we got two two toddlers or two young uh, little ones that run around, so they each bring home pretty much the same thing. So we've got two of everything. We've got you know, the two of the hand Christmas trees and the uh, Rudolphs with the hand antlers. And we've got uh, several bags of reindeer food to uh, sprinkle uh, all over the front yard to make sure that the reindeer know where to land because prior to reindeer food, they didn't know where to go. So, but anyway, all right, so this is coming along very, very nice. Um, see if I can build a little peek down there in the bottom for you. Very, very nice. This is very nice. All right, that's going to do it right there. Load up very nice on the brush there. Um, Parker um, Black Badger. It's a 22 millimeter knot as advertised, but it is a big 22 millimeter knot. But it's a, a very nice uh, pearl color marble handle with some great weight. This is by far my favorite brush. You see me using this quite a bit. So um, I've got some brushes on order. They should be here probably, hopefully by the next shave. I'll have a couple new brushes in. Um, I've, in some of the past ones, you've seen me use the uh, a synthetic brush with a wooden handle. And it was a cheap... Uh, brush that I actually bought. My wife and I went on a trip to Ireland and we were in Belfast and we stopped at a store that also here in the States and my wife was just looking to we were trying to get rid of some of the, the money. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Um, trying to use up some of the, the money because currency and exchanging it back over we just wanted to use it all up before we left. And so we walked into the bod shop because it was on a shopping strip that we were at. And I bought one of their synthetic brushes. I think it equivalent to about eight bucks. But it is one of the toughest synthetic brushes I have ever had in my life. It felt kind of nice there on the shelf. Brought it home. It does not soften up in warm water. It is stiff as it can be. And I am, as much as I use it every once in a while, I'll pick it up. It is not my favorite. All right, so that's a very nice, and I've overloaded the brush, of course, but that's a very nice lather on my face. All right, here we go. The Laser Ultra and the Parker 66 R66. Here we go. First pass is with the grain. A little, a little high in the uh, sideburn area there. But it made a nice clean cut though, didn't it? Um, it 
Definitely need no pressure. The blade is gliding along very nicely. This handle is a uh, probably one of my my more aggressive razors that I own. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So you can tell there's not before I shave. There's not a much much hair growth here, as much as there is right here in the chin and underneath. Um, but that just that just sliced right through all that hair with no problems whatsoever. Um, it's one of the more aggressive uh, razors I own. The more I use it, the more I love it. Um, not a beginner's razor. Or I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest it to a beginner, but for somebody who at least understands how uh, DE razors work and how to angle them and use them in light touch, it is a very nice razor. That is beautiful. And the blade is doing a wonderful job. No problem. No problem at all going through that. Took it all down. Very nice first pass. All right, let's rinse this off. We'll be back for pass number two. Nice slickness. Nice slickness. All right, here we go. Pass number two. And there's so much I love about shaving uh, this way versus the traditional, and I say traditional because that's what this is a new thing now. This is the old thing that's come back new. So when you talk about traditional now, traditional shaving now is goo in a can. And what I love about this retro, if you want to call it retro, no offense to anybody, but uh, what I love about this way of shaving is just the calmness, the way this brush feels against your face. You don't have to go this far into re-lathering a second pass. All you got to do is brush it on, a bit, but it feels so good. It just feels good. So I really enjoy it. All right, here we go. Second pass. You can tell we got, God, we got plenty of shaving cream here. I'll put that bit in the. All right, smooth it out. Okie dokie. Second pass. Must be across the grain.
a little gifts of grain right there. The way the hair grows in this one little patch is that way. And I just came across that against the grain. Got myself a little bit right there, a little weeper. But that was smooth. There was no hangups on that. And that was with one pass with the grain and one pass against the grain right there. And it was just as smooth as it could be. This is a very, very nice shave. Now you saw me on the first pass go diagonally over here because of the way this grows. So I'm going to go straight down. And that is against the grain in that area. down there on the Adam's apple not bad all right you know what I don't do it very often we going for number three I don't think I've ever made a video where I went for number three we're just gonna add a little water there I could probably Mm, it's more of a touch-up free. Let's just do this right here. I generally do not do three passes, but this soap this morning is just performing super well. It's got good cushion. It's got good slickness. It's just hitting everything just right. And it just feels good. Man, that feels good. Here we go. We're going to go for pass number three. All right. I think this is going to be more of a, a touch up against the grain kind of a deal. We'll see, we're just gonna kinda of go with it. Something I don't normally do is go against the grain. I'm just kind of catching all and clean up. It's 
splash against the grain. Here, let's get this. Let's get in here in the bottom. What does Cincy say? Puff out your cheeks. I've seen you say that in your past. I guess your dad told you that at one time. Puff your cheeks out, Cincy. It's funny, ever since he said that in his video, I've been puffing out my cheeks. So apparently, it works for more than just a uh, Cincy. Your dad yelled at you to puff your cheeks out and feel like he kind of yelled at me too. All right, so my mustache area doesn't even need to get the grain. It's smooth as it can be with two passes. But I'm just not going under the nose for it. That is nice. That's good enough. That is BBS, and a good way to start off Christmas holidays. All right, the true test with that Allen block. Get cleaned up, rinsed off, and get the Allen block out. All right, got my Allen block. Probably my favorite part of the shave. Just throwing the alum on. Not bad. All right, Daryl Claire had that little weeper, there's a little irritation, or not irritation, a little burn. And then over here in my trouble area, there's a little burn over there. I expected that. Just because of the way that hair comes in and grows. I'm going to double up in this area with the alum. That is nice. Alright. I really enjoyed that shave. That razor is a... Uh, that's a great razor. And I, I've seen some reviews out there. If you go into Parker... If you punch in Parker R66 reviews... There's guys from all over the place that talk about it. There's, uh, and I don't remember names um, of companies and stuff. And I don't, if I've got anything negative to say, I usually don't throw anybody under the bus, so to speak. And most of the stuff is all opinions anyway, and this is just my opinion. And uh, there's, uh, there's one review out there where the guy never shaves. He just talks about the razor, and he, he just tells you about the razor, and then he tells you that they just had a hard time finding the correct angle on it. Um, and I, I want to say he said it was a, an okay beginner's razor, but they had a hard time finding the angle. Well, if you have a hard time finding the angle and you're seasoned in it, then I don't think it's proper to be given to a beginner. So I would not say that the R66 is a beginner's razor. Um, more seasoned veteran um, shaver would be fine, but not for the beginner. Um, but they, they seem to have a little trouble. I don't have any trouble with it. I, I agree. It, it is a more, it's an aggressive razor, and that's why I wouldn't give it to a, uh, a, a brand new, you know, um, wet shaver. But uh, as far as anybody else that's been doing it for a while, uh, if you're looking for a very nice um, twist to twist to turn, um, open, twist to turn, twist to open. Butterfly razor. I'm just gonna rinse this off and clean it up a bit so we talk about it. This is a good one. 
I love this razor. Uh, the more I use it, the more I appreciate it, the more I, I like it. Um, it's not going to set you back. Hmm. Wipe it off just a little bit. It's not going to set you back. I think um, if I'm if I remember, I mean it's it's a thirty dollar razor and it's a it's a heavy weight. I mean it's four it's four plus ounces. I mean it's a heavy heavy handle. Um, but that heavy handle is what makes it easier or makes it so great with the, just no touch whatsoever of um, of shaving. You just don't need to use any pressure whatsoever. And you guys out there, if you've been shaving for a while with different handles, you know that there are some handles you still have to put a little bit of pressure on. I'm not saying you're bearing down like a cartridge razor, but you do have to use a little bit of pressure versus some other ones. This one is no pressure. I mean, you literally lay this on your face and you let it do its work. This is the golf club of uh, shaving of <laughs> safety razors. Does it, I hope that makes sense. You let the razor do the work. If you're a golfer, you understand. You let the club do the work, and um, and with this, this is a this is a golfer. This is a, like a golf club. I mean, you just let it do the work. I love this razor. It is a great razor. Um, really, really enjoy it. And as far as the Laser Ultra, man, that was a good pairing. I really enjoyed it. Uh, got one weeper that's still kind of going there, but. For the most part, anything else is is gone away. Um, it's a very nice pairing, very smooth, very efficient. Feels great. I'm gonna rinse my face off, get the alum off. Um, but I really, really enjoyed this razor, and that blade did a very nice. That was a very nice pairing between those two. So Laser Ultra, made in India. I'm gonna rinse my face off real quick. And I have a habit that when I'm uh, when I rinse the alum off my face, or my normal routine is, excuse me, my normal routine is that when the alum's on my face as my alum is drying, I'm cleaning up brushes. So naturally, after I'd done that, I stuck the brush in the water, but just it's a little, little bit more hydrated of a, uh, of a uh, lather there, but still. Um, I think you get the idea. I ripped some of it out, but it's still got some nice peaks in it. Very yogurty, very creamy, very slick. That was a for Frankenstein. <sighs> Tobacco caramel and spiced mahogany. I smell them. <laughs> I smell them both in there. So very nice, uh, very nice shade. Sorry, I got the water running while I'm talking. I'm a little bit out of whack with that. Uh, but the uh, Parker uh, Black Badger, uh, marbled handle, pearl marble handle, uh, $30. It's a very good deal. Very good brush. I have greatly uh, enjoyed it. And uh, like I said, you see it in most of my videos. So, all right, here we go. Last bit. What are we doing? Uh, well, I had my... Frankenstein aftershave somewhere, and I guess I did not bring it from uh, from the workshop. Oh well, that's where we're gonna go. Okay, well we're gonna go with we'll go with Old Faithful here. Bay Rum aftershave. Uh, I have a bottle that I keep when I make an order of aftershave. Um, there's usually just a little bit left over um, <clears throat> from the bottle or from the the when I mix it up. So what I do is I, I've got a little bottle. I just kind of pour that little bit off of, and I use those a lot of the times just in my spare. Or when I'm not on camera, I'm using that a little bit. All right, 12 to 15 drops of the aftershave. And there it is running around because it's not as thick as a bomb. Not as fluid as a splash. It is not alcohol based, and I know that there is some debate on alcohol based and not alcohol based. I went to a dermatologist years ago. The dermatologist told me to get away from alcohol, stay away from the alcohol. It's drying your skin out. Yes, it burns. Yes, it's a disinfectant. Yes, it's an antiseptic. All those fun things. But ultimately, it is drying your face out. 
Oh gosh, that is, man. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And that aftershave is gone. It's not even, it's not even on the air. So uh, anyway, they told me to stay away from alcohol when I started producing and uh, looking and searching for uh, aftershaves that I liked that were not alcohol based. I mean, most of them are, most all your splashes have an alcohol base. Um, your bombs, for the most part, do not have an alcohol base. Um, they're more water based. And so I tend to fall more into the category of enjoying the bombs and what they do for my skin and hydrating and all that stuff. Plus it is winter time and a bomb is a great thing to use in the winter time. Uh, I use an Allen block for the antiseptic uh, side of things. So that works out great for me. Therefore I don't really need the splash with the burn and the alcohol. And like I said, uh, with it drying out my face, I tend to stick to bombs. So that's what works for me. Maybe if it works for you, don't know. If you're having irritation and things like that after, just try an Allen block and go straight into a bomb. I don't know. These are all opinions. It's not hard fact truth. It's just guidance. That's all. If you're looking for some information, there you go. There's my opinion. So other than that, uh, we're getting ready for Christmas. Hope you're getting ready for Christmas. We're getting really close and ready for some Georgia football. That's right. Georgia football's coming. Um, Shaved Weiss, I know he's excited. His uh, Alabama boys are going to be playing also here soon. And uh, who knows what's going to happen. I'm, I'm excited about this year. Uh, recruiting took place this past uh, week. And, uh, hey, Alabama, you don't have number one recruiting no more. Sorry. Sorry. They all signed up somewhere else. But either way, go dogs, Sick them. Woo, woo, woo. All that good fun stuff. Um, so it's going to be exciting weeks coming up. And also to mention Christmas, I hope that everybody enjoys a Christmas. I hope that you're with your loved ones. I hope you're with who you want to be with. And uh, just remember what the spirit of the Christmas uh, actually is. You know, that fellowship uh, with friends and with family and being close to the ones you love. Um, so if you're overseas, you're out there, my hat's off to you. Oorah, Marine Corps, all that good stuff. Army, Navy, Coast Guard, uh, all you guys, I greatly appreciate what you do and serve uh, the country, and I hope that you stay safe this Christmas season and uh, at least get a telephone call to the ones you love. Other than that, be safe, guys. Enjoy your holiday. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time.